G'day, there are two races on the 2024 calendar where the F1 drivers and team principals arrive at the track and leave in armoured vehicles. And those vehicles are built to provide a variety of levels of protection. Let's delve deeper. Mexico City and Sao Paulo are the two cities where all of the drivers are chauffeured to and from the track in armoured vehicles. These are big, beefy SUVs with heavy windows, tinted and reinforced to withstand anything from a 44 Magnum up to an M2 machine gun. F1 teams employ security experts and their job is to recommend what level of protection is required. Most team principals and all F1 drivers arrived and left in armoured vehicles at both of those races. What about the team crews? A different situation. They are at lesser risk, so they'll arrive in vans with perhaps a security or even a police escort. Here are some of the armoured vehicles used in Mexico. They're parked in the driver's car park, which is adjacent to the paddock, and they stay there the whole day. They're not ferrying drivers back and forth. One car, one driver, or team principal. I spoke to a couple of ex-F1 drivers, and they told me back in their day, they didn't have drivers to take them to and from the track. One said that uh, he had driven his own armor-plated vehicle, no problem at all. But one told me he'd even driven some shitbox cars in those cities, and that's his words, so as not to attract attention. I found a number of companies that offer armored vehicles in both of those cities. Here's one that quoted around 1,700 US per day, but that does include your security trained driver. But certainly the price will depend on the level of protection. And talking about protection, cyber protection, Surfshark is a VPN provider, a virtual private network. It's available as an app or a browser extension, making it easy to install on your phone or your computer. Surfshark works by encrypting your data so your online identity stays secure from cyber criminals and large corporations. The thing I love about Surfshark is I can teleport my computer or phone anywhere in the world. And that bypasses region restrictions. For example, the other day I wanted to watch something on a streaming service out of Australia, but I was overseas. Viewing it via Surfshark made it possible. Plus, Surfshark can alert you if your passwords are being compromised or used by others. Now, I have a number of social media accounts, so that factor alone is a game changer. To get started with Surfshark, click the link in the description below and use the promo code KIM for four extra months absolutely free. Have a look at this chart. It shows SPS levels. Uh, SPS is an industry term and it means soldier protection system. So the higher the number, the greater the protection. A vehicle built to level three standards would see you safe, according to this chart, against say a nine millimeter or a 44 Magnum. And which of these vehicles is level three? Well, it's not obvious to the human eye, but certainly when I tapped on some windows, uh, it felt like concrete. But from what I've discovered, there are various bulletproof glass makeups which make them effective at stopping bullets to varying degrees. The hard components deform the bullet upon impact and the softer materials absorb and disperse the bullet's energy. Bit of a science lesson there for you. And the sticky layers in between the glass, well, they grab onto the bullet and contribute to that protection level. So my hotel here arranged a car to pick me up from Sao Paulo Airport. Cost me about 180 US dollars, but it is a trip of more than two hours and it was a C-Class Mercedes with bulletproof windows and all of the other protection measures. And that vehicle here sells for about 86,000 US dollars. That's unarmored, but the armor plating is at least another 50%. And it makes the car much heavier. You lose a lot of driving performance, but then again, you're not racing them, so does it really matter? But thankfully on my trip from the airport, no guns were involved and no bullets were fired. Now in Mexico City, most of the teams deal through one agency and they have staff who stand out the front in the morning and the evening and actually coordinate what's going on. And it's not like the cars are split up between three or four drivers. No, every driver has their own car and their own driver and they don't leave during the day. They sit in that car park and one of the F1 driver's trainers told me that uh, they're pretty handy when it comes to organising restaurant reservations because they're out there for so long that uh, they're often called upon to look after that. Next up, a level four protection system will save you against an AK-47 machine gun. And the protection on the vehicle covers, yes, the windows, but also side panels and even the roof. So how long might a driver be inside their vehicle on any of the four days at those events? Well, most stay in five-star hotels in either Mexico City or in Marumbi in uh, Sao Paulo. And in light traffic, it's probably a journey of about 25 minutes, but most, if not all, of the drivers have police escorts. And they pay for that, it works out around 660 US dollars a day, and that covers morning and night, 
for the police to escort you to and from the track in Mexico City. And the 25 minute journey might be 22, but at the end of the day, and I'm talking Friday night in Mexico City, is a nightmare for traffic. It's gridlocked. So even with a police escort, it's probably going to be every bit of an hour on the way back to the city. It took me, a member of the public, two hours and 20 minutes on the Friday night. Sao Paulo, it's the same going to the track, but a lot quicker coming home. I don't think I've had a trip of anything more than about 55 minutes. And what about the weight of these cars? Well, certainly a lot heavier, obviously, because they've got these plates of metal and thick glass. And typically, it'll be 150 plus kilos more than an unarmored car. And while I've mentioned the roof, the windows, and the side panels, they even soup up the tires. They put in some construction inside the tire so that if the tires are shot out, the car can still run. Obviously, not anything like what you'd have with rubber tires, but in a pinch, it'll get you out of danger, so they say. Now, is all of this security an overkill? I don't think so. Things have certainly changed a lot given the sport's popularity. Some of these drivers are treated like rock stars and teams need to protect them because they are the most prominent. And of course, they need to be looking after their crew as well. And to that end, at both Mexico and Sao Paulo, a lot of the crew don't identify themselves. Take Ferrari last race, they were wearing black tracksuit tops over the top of their red shirts, so it wasn't obvious to anyone driving by that they were with Formula One. And uh, in Sao Paulo and Mexico, we don't put our stickers on the window for our car parking. We keep them hidden until we get to the front gate and then we produce them. Normally, we stick them on the cars and we're identified everywhere we go. Next up, an SPS level of five should stop an AR15 55 gram projectile. And that, by the way, can travel a kilometre in a second. And if you're wondering whether or not drivers sit in the passenger front seat, the answer is no, almost always in the back seat. And I have seen occasions where drivers have been lying down in the back seat as they enter or exit the track. And researching this video, I was looking back to Mexico City on Friday night. If you were a baddie and you were trying to kidnap a driver, you wouldn't do it outside the main gate because you'd have no getaway. The traffic was just at a standstill. If you did have a getaway, you'd be doing it at a very slow speed. And not just ordinary police, sometimes we're seeing these fellas here, well decked out and I gather they're probably riot police. Of course, anyone hiring these vehicles hopes that whatever level of protection they chose matched any threat. And why is it just these two races where this tactic is involved? I spoke to two security people and they told me that those cities have had issues in the past. In Sao Paulo 2017, a Mercedes crew had their laptop stolen. They were stuck at an intersection not far from the track. Normally that intersection would have been patrolled by police, but they had left earlier. Armed thugs approached them, stole their gear, and even a car with FIA staff, including my friend here, Matteo Bonciani, was affected. He had a gun pointed at him. And in 2016, Bernie Eccleston's mother-in-law was kidnapped, but that wasn't at the track, that was from her home, and she was eventually released without any ransom being paid. Mexico City and Sao Paulo are polar opposites, though, of the Middle East. Crime rates there are super low, so no such protection is required. And I do remember Oscar Piastri and his trainer actually walked from a hotel last year in Jeddah through the general public. Security was not an issue there. Researching this video, I found lots of companies offering armored car services in both of those cities. So it's not unusual there. In most of Europe and in Australia, where I'm from, that's um, not something we'd really ever consider. It's viewed as a drastic measure, but in these markets, it's a necessity. And what is the top level of protection for an armored vehicle? Level seven. And that'll save you in the event you're being attacked with armor piercing projectiles. And the ammunition quoted here states a 166 gram or nearly six ounce projectile. Now over the past six seasons, I've not heard of any real dramas uh, security wise with drivers, although Pierre Gasly did have a laptop stolen in uh, Mexico two years ago. In the paddock, Carlos Sainz had a watch stolen in Milan, you might remember, he actually chased down the thieves and retrieved the watches and the thieves were arrested. And Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc had watches stolen as well. Both in 2023, Lando's was a more violent encounter while Charles had his $320,000 Richard Mill lifted from his wrist when he stopped to appease some fans. And getting back to these armored vehicles, pretty much all of them are black, white, or a handful of gray ones. Certainly nothing that would stand out in the traffic. 
And the most common vehicles are definitely Chevy Suburbans, but I did see a number of Jeep Grand Cherokees, Cadillac Escalades and Ford Expeditions. Security is now vital in the sport and travelling to different countries as we do means different levels of threats. But teams can't afford to be lax when it comes to security and that will mean getting closer to your favourite driver in the future will become more and more difficult. And before you go and pick up one of the remaining bucket hats, there's not many left at KimElman.com, please like and subscribe. And for a whole lot of extra stuff, this is where you need to look. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. I'm gonna test the audio out and, and see what you think of this because really when I walk around here, is it fantastic? Does it matter if I step back here and you can see my shorts? No, I don't think it does matter because that's probably what I want to see. There's a f***ing ant on that. <laughs> Get out.